In the cases where we do see that swelling increases measures of whole muscle size, and potentially this might also apply to measures of fiber cross-sectional area from a biopsy, are not perfectly relevant to typical traditional dynamic resistance training. We have a figure describing uh, the ultrasound timelines. And not every single study said exactly when post-testing ultrasound measurements were taken, but we did our best to describe what was reported, okay? You can see that sometimes a study would say, hey, we measured muscle size 48 to 72 hours after the last training session. Some of them said at least 48 hours after the last training session. Some of them had a more specific indication. So maybe they said exactly 72 hours post. And in, 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 in a lot of ways, the reporting can definitely be improved here um, going forward uh, in volume studies. But nonetheless, we tried our best to describe what was reported. And if you really want to dive into these, make sure you check out the caption of this figure in the manuscript, um, because it uh, kind of describes that. Um, but nonetheless, this is a limitation, is that we don't know exactly whether these effects would apply at, say, two weeks post-training. And just from a high level, measuring muscle hypertrophy isn't as straightforward as you think. And, and at the end of the day, there are some systematic factors that, that personally I can think of that could lead to an overestimation of muscle size from higher volumes. There are some things like connective tissue thickening, some, you, you could potentially make an argument with factors related to glycogen, um, angiogenesis, or the formation of new blood vessels might play a very small role as well. Um, there are things like longitudinal hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, and then also uh, muscle damage induced swelling as well, which I think is what a lot of people are going to kind of think of right off the bat with with high volume training programs. And we'll, we'll, we'll dive into the swelling stuff here a little bit more in a bit. At the end of the day, kind of drawing on a, a really nice review paper from Cody Hahn from a few years ago, the title is something to the effect of size, muscle hypertrophy size matters, uh, but so does the measurement or, or something like that, which is just a fantastic title. At the end of the day, I think they have a, a nice figure in there indicating that muscle tissue is about 75% water and about 25% other stuff. Um, and of the 25% other stuff, about 65% of that is myofibrillar proteins. Yeah, exactly. So at the end of the day, I think that should just humble us in terms of whole, mes uh, whole muscle measures of muscle size, okay? Because there are a lot of other things that could kind of shift around as a result of training and as a result of particularly high volume training. My interpretation of this, and we're going to, again, dive into swelling specifically here uh, a little bit further in a bit. My interpretation of this is that these things are unlikely to explain all of the dose response relationship here, but it should add some uncertainty at higher volumes, especially because we don't have a ton of direct data indicating to us that these whole, mu uh, whole muscle measures of muscle size are going to kind of properly account for all of these factors. And therefore, we, we might not be able to fully extrapolate these beyond these 8 to 12 week training studies. So let, let's dive into what we know our perspective on swelling up to this point. I think it's important to keep in mind that swelling that increases measurements of muscle size can absolutely occur, absolutely occur. And in the context of highly damaging resistance training, it peaks pretty late, right? So you actually do see an increase in muscle size for multiple days, that increases for multiple days. And again, if you think back to the typical time periods of the ultrasound measurements following the final training session in the included studies, that could conceivably be an issue because for the most part, these measurements are about 48 to 72 hours after the final training session. Now, before we get into some more caveats there, it's worth noting the potential mechanisms of swelling. I'll note that there is not necessarily a consensus regarding um, the exact mechanisms for swelling, but there are I'll, I'll call it two and a half mechanisms that I'll, I'll note. The first is fluid leaks from blood vessels effectively around skeletal muscle fibers, so within the endomyceum of the fascicles. And to my understanding, this would impact whole muscle size measurements 
but not necessarily uh, measures of fiber cross-sectional area. The second mechanism would be uh, intracellular edema. So this is similar to the muscle pump in the sense that there is additional fluid within the muscle cell itself. Um, but again, the time course is different in the sense that if it is due to muscle damage, it'll be delayed. Um, and ultimately that damage is due to damage of the sarcolemma. And th that is probably the most common one. And if you think of our moderator analysis, so we did do a moderator analysis of studies that measured whole muscle versus fiber, and there wasn't a clear indication that one had a uh, stronger or weaker dose response relationship, but there are so many caveats with those moderator analyses that I don't put a ton of stock into that. But for what it's worth, hey, we still saw a general dose response relationship between uh, like, like whether it was uh, whole muscle size measurements or fiber measurements. There are other things related to muscle damage or kind of in this realm that could influence muscle size measurements, such as extra muscular connective tissue can become thicker uh, from more damaging exercise. So again, point being is there are multiple mechanisms. There's no clear consensus regarding these mechanisms, but nonetheless, there seems to be the possibility that highly damaging exercise can increase uh, muscle size. And again, this has been reported. Uh, Zach, there's an image uh, by Kasanori, I believe, from 1996. And this is a single subject that was previously untrained. And again, this subject is just for kind of demonstration purposes. And, and, and I believe this was reflected on the group level as well. So these un previously untrained participants performed 24 maximal eccentric contractions and the increases in muscle size just from that single damaging bout peaked about three to six days after the resistance training bout how that muscle size actually increased so if you look at the distance from the humerus to the superficial aponeurosis of the muscle you'll be able you'll be able to see that now to my knowledge these sorts of kind of dramatic increases in muscle size as a result of highly damaging exercise have only been convincingly and consistently reported in very highly damaging maximal eccentric training and typically it's in untrained folks or at least it's in training that is very novel to the cohort. And this is often referred to in these studies as actually muscle injury, okay? And sometimes this muscle injury is so high that it can cause atrophy. So it has been reported here and there um, that some of these very, very, very damaging bouts can actually cause atrophy. There's, so basically what you're seeing here is in the top left, I believe that's the pre- so that's before the bout. Um, and then you can see uh, if you go slightly to the right, that is post or one day, one, one day after the bout. And you can see the distance between the humerus and the superficial aponeurosis. That's basically how muscle thickness is measured with an ultrasound. Um, that has increased, right? And it's highly unlikely that that is just hypertrophy from one bout of resistance training. So uh, a lot of like, I, I think this is a great example of, hey, Highly, highly damaging exercise can absolutely cause um, swelling to the point that it increases muscle size. And if you look at some of the following panels, so if you go to um, day two and then day three and then day four and day five, I think they have on there as well. You can see if anything, it continues to increase. And again, on the cohort level, I believe it peaked around days three through six. And you can also see um, a change in the echo intensity or, or some of the, the, the brightness there in the scans. So ultimately, again, this has a delayed effect that very well could be confounding our results here. Now, Again, this is very, very damaging exercise, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to that next figure here in a second. But I think it's really important to emphasize that in that example of the highly damaging exercise, so on the, leave it on the previous figure, Zach. Um, in that example, basically, this is more along the lines of muscle injury is, is what it comes down to. Um, I'll, I'll throw a little anecdote in there for myself. This was a pretty long time ago. I think at the time I had been training for probably four or five years pretty consistently. And I was at a conference and basically they had this like isokinetic type device. So what that means is it's able to adjust the resistance throughout the entire range of motion so that the speed of the contraction remains consistent. So Basically, to put it very simply, the eccentric portion is way harder than if you were to just do like a dumbbell bicep curl. And I think I did like one set on that at that conference. And my biceps were sore for like almost 10 days from like that one really hard set of isokinetic bicep curls. So point being here is that I think that in the cases, again, this is my perspective to be very clear, 
in the cases where we do see that swelling increases measures of whole muscle size, and potentially this might also apply to measures of fiber cross-sectional area from a biopsy, are not perfectly relevant to typical traditional dynamic resistance training. Okay. Further, to my knowledge from these included studies, I'm not aware of any case where this sort of pronounced swelling has coincided without a decrease in muscle strength. So in other words, typically what you see is that uh, if there's really high muscle damage, muscle thickness is much higher as a result of the swelling, almost unanimously uh, from, from my reading of the research, that would also coincide with decreases in muscle strength. Now, to be clear, the peak loss of muscle function often occurs before the peak increase in muscle swelling, um, but nonetheless, the peak swelling typically occurs while strength is still down. And again, if you look at our dose response plots of the effects of volume on strength, we don't necessarily see like this clear inverted U relationship, which again calls into question the overwhelming possibility of swelling confounding our results here. Absolutely. I think swelling is probably contributing to some degree in terms of the actual effect sizes that we're seeing. 100%. I don't dispute that in any way. But to say that it is, again, like you said, to influence the interpretation of the dose response relationship, it would need to be a disproportionately higher effect of swelling yep. from the higher volumes, essentially. Yep. And that, to me, seems hard to, hard to justify. Yeah. Now, I do think it's very possible that there is truly a plateau in the dose response relationship. And again, because you see diminishing returns of additional set volume and hypertrophy, that the dose response relationship in our model appears to continue to increase, but just due to a linear effect of swelling, right? I think with our perspective of just thinking about the possible mechanisms here, the data we do have, again, very limited, it's highly unlikely it's exp uh, an exponential effect of swelling with additional sets. At most, it's a probably a linear effect of additional swelling with uh, additional sets, but it's probably diminishing returns. So the most, I guess, like charitable possibility is that additional sets later in the dose response relationship are making an additional, the, the dose response relationship show up when it's really not there. Um, and to kind of spoil the plot a little bit, that is like one of the main takeaways from this project for me is that moderate volumes are quite clearly better than low volumes. Again, that's my interpretation, but higher volumes compared to moderate volumes, there's some additional uncertainty here because those effects become smaller and you have to consider the things that might confound our measurements of muscle size, such as swelling.